The Last Supper, um, again one of the most favoured of the religious images used in the house. Uh, most West Indians are Christians and they would have a lot of um, these religious images around the house or words of um, religious inspiration. Um, another one that's quite popular is Christ is the head of this household, the unseen guest at every meal and the silent listener to every conversation. Um, most of these objects, most of these images will be of white characters, as you can see in um, here. Um, and it would take quite a place, normally again in the front room. A lot of the younger generation, you have to understand that the first group of people who came, they came here really to go back to Jamaica after a period of five years. And they tried to furnish their house in this style that they, you know, would like to. They were largely Christian people. And as I said before, these religious pictures would be placed around the house, uh, the front room being the most decorated with them. This is central. And sometimes it's over the front door as you come in. So it's at a very visible place so that as you come in, you can see that this is a Christian household. But we, the younger generation, found it a little bit uncomfortable, if you like, because we weren't particularly interested in a white Christ, not when we'd heard so much about, you know, the colonialism and the empire. And, you know, just searching questions that we'd ask ourselves, like if Christianity started in the Middle East, then why is Christ white? You know, why, uh, why are there no black persons, people in that photograph? So we, we found that a little bit awkward to, to deal with. The ruffle, we call these ruffle, these are crocheted objects, um, would be made by people, um, main, main again mothers, and they would be used to decorate uh, furnitures as they are here. Um, they would, uh, I, a friend of mine told me a story um, that he once, he once broke into someone's house because it was so colorful. This is an Irish guy. He said he broke into the house because it was so colorful and he wanted to see where the, all his color was, you know, because when he was walking the streets at night, it was so um, dull and gray, but then the light would be on and he'd be on the window curtains. He could see all this color. So he wanted to see what it was all about. This is the crochet. And again, these objects would be placed, you know, at various points around the house, giving it some idea of color and decoration and and wealth, really. Wealth not in a monetary sense, but in terms of a visual, a visual sense. The ruffle, as you can see there, is pretty important. You know, people would make them, make them to cover vases and things like that. Very colorful. I remember my grandmother sitting for hours. We didn't have television in those days, or some Christians wouldn't have televisions in their house. And they would just sit and make these things. They would be populated with these sort of ceramic figures, very, very cheap ceramic. And they were always white people again. Our house was full of um, white objects, people, porcelain images, uh, you know, and even little lassie dogs, you know, in, in the place. And most black people wouldn't have a dog in their house, wouldn't keep a dog in England, but, you know, they would have images of pictures of dogs and things in their house. The glass cabinet. Now, um, what was nice about the glass cabinet, um, it's just so colorful. There's all these crystals reflecting the light from all over the place. Um, and it was would normally be used by people who, um, it would be used by people to show off, you know, the good things. These are things that they could guarantee that we didn't have a chip on them or anything like that. These little glasses would be used um, um, when they had guests, this is normally when family came from different parts of the country and they would have parties and the white rum would come out and these little shot glasses would be used. White rum, it's normally rum and coke. Um, and, uh, you know, the men, mainly the men would sit around in the front room and, and drink and play music on the, the, the radiogram. Um, and if you go down... Um, the central to this piece is this clock and it's one of the many clocks that people would have been given um, for long service in a factory so they would 
uh, after 25 or 30 years service in a factory, they would be given a clock. Um, and this is one of those clocks which was given to me by, um, it, it belonged to a, a Mr. Gunter in, in Birmingham, a, a very important man. Um, and again, you can see the figurines around them and they were all white, you know, white characters. Um, you know, nothing was made in the image of black people in those days, really. The teapots on the bottom, the teacups, coffee cups, again, these would all come out, you know, sometimes at Christmas as well, we would, these, we would have access to these, they would, you know, the table would be set, you'd get Jamaican chocolate made in, in some of the big teapots, um, and, you know, again, a, a celebration of the years, um, the year passing, the idea is that, you know, thanking God for, you know, making it through another year safely. And, you know, these very colorful gold rim teacups and things like that would be used in the process of celebration. Oh, I have to point out again the doilies, um, which are, are, are under there. No cabinet was complete without these little doilies, which were used um, to decorate the shelves. All glass cabinet had them. The flowers also played a very um, vital and important part in, in, the, in, in, in the West Indian front room. As you can imagine, uh, West Indians come from a very colorful, vibrant place. And uh, I guess they missed all this color when they got here. So plastic flowers offered a, a wonderful um, opportunity to, to feed the eyes really with colors. And this is, um, uh, I've constructed this piece here, um, but these would be in individual vase around the house in on the mantelpiece and various places around the house and sometimes in long vases and they would put all the bits of flowers in there, um, you know, to change the structure of it. This material here and most of the things I'm talking about would have been given to me or I've collected over the years and this is actually stuff that came from people's home. I didn't go out and buy them. I've basically put them together rather than hide them away to present them in this way. And again, as you can see, the, the ruffle um, plays, a, you know, the presentation must be good. It must be colorful and the ruffle, again, plays an important part. They show the color that is needed, you know, by these people. The Caribbean in, in, in general is a very hot, tropical space and very vibrant, very colorful. And the idea is that these flowers, I think, replicate the idea, you know, these colors that they would decorate their houses with out there, all the colors they would have in their garden. And it also brightened up a very dull um, living space that these people were, you know, were existing in. I mentioned the four people that, you know, this guy who said he broke into someone's house to have a look at the colors because it was so colorful and it would be very colorful. This room, although it has or house a lot of these objects, is not a typical West Indian room, front room. It is my, um, it, it holds work that I've made. It's my studio um, and it's also a living space, but I think more so it is a studio space. So it has um, objects that I've collected and objects that I've made. Um, there's a vinyl collection, uh, you know, across there. Um, the paintings are mine. Um, but these objects stand, if you like, central to the work that I do because they are objects that I use, uh, if you like, that was purchased, by, you know, by the first generation of people as they as they arrived in Britain. Paraffin lamp sitting here. It was central, really, to the house because it provided warmth, heat. Um, you have to imagine that when people came here initially, they would not have necessarily have a house they would rent um a, a room with the inner house and the way they would heat the room in the cold winter would be to use a paraffin lamp now the paraffin would be um poured in the base here the reservoir for the paraffin is here this would um open up there's a wick which would be lit and then the, the, the paraffin the, the lamp would be closed and um and the heat would radiate from from this and it has been the source of many happiness and sadness in many uh, respects 
I remember having a conversation with a young woman who I, uh, a group of women, and I, I just mentioned the paraffin lamp and see what sort of discourse came from it. And um, the one of the women said, oh, I loved it when I was a child. I would, I was, I would love it when I was lying in bed and I saw the, the, the pattern it made on the ceiling. And another one said they hated it because it used to, you know, really make your clothes smell of paraffin when you're on the bus and in public spaces. And another one said she hated it because uh, it caused the fire which killed her sister. So the paraffin lamp, you know, they, they, and the, the idea of collecting these objects is the object in themselves are, are fine, but it's the stories that are attached to them that I'm interested in. I also remember people who would be paying their insurance on a regular basis and they wouldn't be having any returns, no money. So money was going out and nothing coming back in. They weren't making any claims, but occasionally they would stand very close to the paraffin lamp. And, you know, the, an old coat, wearing an old coat, would, they would allow it to get singed on the, on the lamp and then they could claim on the, on the, on the insurance for that one or they would put it close to, um, uh, you know, a, a bed spread or something, obviously watching it very carefully. Um, another thing that I remembered quite clearly is um, some people, um, and it would be obvious on women, would sit with a paraffin lamp really very close to their legs. Um, and what would happen, you'd find that the inside of their legs would be mottled with the over a period of time, you know, where the paraffin lamp has affected their skin. So yes, the paraffin lamp, very important um, uh, part of, you know, our existence. It's, if you like, it's what fueled, you know, our, our stay, because we obviously found it very cold. Uh, the rooms were sometimes so cold that um, the, the keyholes and the floor, every available space where draft would enter the room would be blocked. The radiogram, the blue spot, as it's commonly known, you know, while the cabinet was the, the uh, you know, the domain of the woman of the house, this is definitely the man of the house. He would have bought it, um, perhaps, you know, choosing it together with his wife, but, you know, it's his prerogative. He would also make sure that the cabinet here is full with, with liquor, with drinks, you would have your cherry bee and your um, other drinks, rum especially, will be there. Would be there. Um, and also, I have to show it, share this with you. This is this is the um, pineapple ice bucket, um, which was again quite popular. Um, ice would be obviously placed in there when we have visitors. And it would be brought out, you know, and put on the table, um, and so you know, and and use. But you'd have your um, uh, warnings, advocate. You'd have uh, white rum, uh, sweet wine, uh, cherry bees, uh, various drinks would be placed in there. I don't think beer was ever placed in there, though. And in fact, not much beer was consumed in the early days. That would be for the pub and um, more, you know, social drink in the pub. And this would be on the um, lock and key. Sometimes the key would be left there and sometimes the key would be placed somewhere secure so that, you know, the children of the house, you've only got to tell, tell a child not to do something and they would do it, won't they? So, you know, so when they're not there, you know, they won't come and drink or anything like that. So the key would be taken out and hidden. Um, and also most people, children of the house would be warned really not to touch the radiogram. It was a no-go area. In fact, the entire front room was a no-go area. But um, what would happen, how this thing works, um, the, when the, 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 the doors, as you can see, slides, it, and this reveals this area. So you pull this piece out. Um, this will be lifted up. The records normally 45s. I've left this one here because I received it with, with the um, with the gram when I when I was given it. Um, so the, about seven vinyl would be placed like that. This arm would come across, and drop onto the radio onto the there. 
then this would be switched on like that. Unfortunately, this isn't working. It'll be pushed back in. And then after every one played, after the first one plays in, the next one drops down and so on until the entire lot were played and you change them or repeat the process. And it was controlled from this side here, where we have the, the controls switching on and tuning. And these radiograms were bought initially to take back to Jamaica. It's a German made um, instrument um, it's a German-made uh, radiogram, and uh, it would work perfectly well in Jamaica with the, the current, um, AC-DC current. I think it's quite different out there, but there's a switch on the bottom, on the back of it. If you flick that, then it works in Jamaica. So most of the things, or a lot of these um, large items that were bought, were initially bought to be taken back to Jamaica.